I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this is the only podcast that is delayed enough <laughs> to, to ask the question. Hey, Jamie, what you watching? Uh, well, I and mean, as you know, it is... Uh... Oh, I hate that. I hate when people do that, as you know. <laughs> as as <laughs> but... you know. It goes without <laughs> saying. <laughs> but as you know, it uh, is November. So we had... Um, all of our Halloween watches and just the month of October. So I've been watching a lot, but I do have some highlights. And one of those, okay, no, this is a low light. Um, oh, all right. Well, I, I, <laughs> we, I was excited. Now I'm less so. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but this is my most recent watch. And we watched the Jeepers Creepers Reborn movie from this year that just came out. Is that... And let me not to interrupt you right off the bat but let me interrupt you right off the bat is okay. that is that also directed by the pedophile it is not okay no it actually has nothing to do with him he doesn't even get any money from it so okay, great great for anyone out there who was maybe interested in seeing it but didn't want to see it because of victor salva uh, that is off the table it's not a problem but I wouldn't recommend you see it anyway because it's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, it's so bad I took it personally. It hurt my feelings. <laughs> it offended you? <laughs> I, um, because I actually like that franchise. I'm, I'm, don't love the third one. Nobody does, but it, but it was serviceable. I didn't hate it like a lot of people did. But overall, I enjoy the franchise. So I'm like, well, even though I'd heard nothing good about it, Brian ended up getting the Blu-ray in for review. So I'm like, well, we may as well watch it. And yeah, I, I don't, uh, don't recommend you do that. Now they did do some interesting things as far as it actually has nothing to do story-wise with the previous films. They do mention the previous films as, as if they were fake. So the idea is that this is the real story and the other movies were just movies about this character. Oh, so sort of like uh, the Ouija Experiment 4? No, a Ouija Experiment 2. Sorry, Ouija Experiment 2. Actually, you know what? That is immediately what I thought. No, I have no idea. I've never fucking seen that. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the smart move. <laughs> um but i'm anyway but i'm yes there there were like ouija experiment 2 presumes that ouija experiment 1 was a movie about a thing and ouija okay. experiment 2 gets like like this is the real shit you know that kind of thing yeah i mean that's basically the idea the there's some kids going to a horror hound weekend mm -hmm. and that could have been cool but unfortunately, they had about 30 people at this Horror Hound weekend. And I'm like, you couldn't even get enough extras to fill out this shit. It looks like it just looked barren. It was really sad. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> while they're there, they, they're, in the, uh, they're in the creeper country where country. it actually is a local legend. And then it kind of plays off that. But... The problems with it really are, well, one, the script is pretty bad. Like, the dialogue is just terrible. The acting was, even if they had good dialogue, these actors, I don't think, could have done anything with it. It was so bad. But then, on top of that, there are so many scenes. Like, for instance, at one point, they're in a graveyard. It's a blue screen. <laughs> oh, are, oh, no. They actually green screened a fucking graveyard <laughs> behind these people. I'm like, you can't make that set would cost you like $17. Like if it's not that much, it wouldn't be that bad, but no, they just green screened that like all a, a lot of stuff. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, is that, is that green screen? <laughs> like what the fuck? So they did that. And then the creeper himself is little, like he looks so tiny, like, whereas the original creeper, I always thought he was kind of imposing and menacing, you know, this guy just looks little and they, I don't know, it just was 
it was bad. It was like they cut every corner they possibly could. They went as cheap as they could with everything. And it shows. Plus, the story, while it had some interesting parts, was really it was really messy and then by the time you get to the end you're just like oh fuck this like it and I hate saying that you know I don't I don't like to trash movies I really don't I enjoy that's why we do the show we do that Brian and I do is because we like to celebrate horror yeah so I and I had after years of of reviewing whether it was written or on podcasts really bad movies i was like i don't want to do that anymore you know i want to watch things that i enjoy and i want to talk about things that i enjoy and i wasn't i didn't have a lot of high hopes going into this just because i hadn't heard anything good about it at all but i was like well you know i'm invested in the franchise i may as well watch it and oh my god i don't recommend it let me give you a little trivia. I'm watching the trailer for this now as, as we're talking about this. Uh, and it does look super cheap. Like this is the one of the most shot on digital digital movies I've yeah. ever seen. Oh, yeah. But, all right, let me, let me give you some stats that you may not have been aware of. So, director Timo Voronsola, which I'm probably close to getting right, is the same guy what directed those two Iron Sky movies. Which Iron might Sky. explain, yeah, the one that's like, oh, the Nazis have been living on the moon. Oh, I don't think I ever saw that. Uh, there are two of them, and there's no reason for you to see either of them. Um, it's kind of an interesting um, okay. idea, and it's like real campy. But do you remember that Thomas Jane movie, The Mutant Chronicles? Yes. Okay, it, it's that level of, we're just going to do everything on green screen. And sometimes it looks okay. Sometimes it looks really bad. But no matter what, that's kind of what we're married to. And so it makes a little bit of sense that this dude would have would have leaned perhaps a little too heavily on that kind of filmmaking. Because it, it's sort of what he's known for in a way. Uh, well, then this just adds to it, I guess. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right then. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's so sad how bad it is. And here's the worst part: they got D. Wallace involved. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but you fuck? know she'll show up for like twenty grand and travel expenses. Which oh yeah, and I'm not gonna blame her for that. I mean, no. if you can get a paycheck, get a paycheck. But it's just well, and it starts out the beginning of the movie is a recreation that this guy is watching on YouTube, but you don't know that you think you know it just sort of starts off as if it's the movie and that's the part with d wallace and then you find out like oh he's just watching a youtube video of a recreation of a story kind of like a true crime thing and that part has better production than the actual movie it looks like a real movie <laughs> you know they're yeah. actually outside they're in a car like it looks it looks more realistic than the stuff they did for the for the actual film. And I'm just like, ah, well, that's a real bummer. Um, Yeah, it is. But you know, what are you going to do? So not watch it again. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah. I like just looking at the, the trailer, which, you know, me, I don't watch a lot of trailers, but looking at this, I'm like, Oh yeah, this is something I definitely do not want to see. Um, which is great because I can take that off the list. I have this giant list of like every horror movie that's ever been released. And I'm like, well, at some point I should go, I should watch this. And so it's beneficial to do this show when you're like, oh, that movie sucks. I'm like, great. I can, I can just scratch that one off the list. I don't have to subject myself to that. Um, hey, uh, speaking of subjecting myself uh, to things, though, you know how I feel about the Scream movies. Uh, yes. In in the sense that I think there's one good one. Yeah, right. And so, um, oh, oh, probably uh, two weeks ago, I kind of got in my head because I, you know, this is the time of year that I start putting together the list of the best movies of 2022, and that also means I am doing catch up. 
you know, of like, okay, what are, right. what are things that people have talked about that I haven't seen and not talked about, like you just talked about Jeepers Creepers Reborn, but talked about in the sense of like, oh no, this was really, really good. And so that's kind of what I'd heard about Scream, the new, the new Scream film. Mm -hmm. And, uh -huh. um, so because I didn't remember shit about anything after the first Scream movie, or actually the first two in fairness, so I skipped the first two screen movies and then I watched three, four, and five, five being the most recent, or I guess, yeah, uh, three, four, and five. They're making a six, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I, as I was going through it, I was like, oh, three is interesting. It's not great, but I like the Parker Posey stuff and there's some yeah. good stuff in it. But I don't think it's necessarily a great movie. I think Scream 4 is legitimately bad. I just don't think it's a very good movie. Um, you know, I know a lot of people love all the Scream movies, and this is not to tell anybody that they're wrong. I just don't care for Scream 4 at all. But I thought Scream 5 was great. Uh, oh, okay. Which, which, like, yeah, it, it surprised me, too. And Because <laughs> I, I went into it like, I don't know. Th this feels like a real sideways reboot of it, which it is. It That's totally what it is. Um, but I do think that it, it addresses the fact that scream has this weird legacy and like, have you, have you seen it? Yeah. Okay. I saw it in the theater. Okay, great. I, I just didn't want to give anything away. So when you have that moment where one of the characters that kind of stand in for, jamie kennedy in this movie who's like i'm gonna give you all the rules of the the pre-make yeah. or whatever she she calls it prequel uh, i uh, mean pre uh re requel requel that's right the requel um and i thought it, that was you know again because we're seeing so many of those this kind of felt like the original scream and that was like well at the very least, it really has its finger on the pulse of what these movies are and that they do all follow kind of a formula um, and also manage to be pretty vicious at times. Like the kills are, are genuinely good. Um, and I think that, again, slight spoilers for Scream, although it's not, you know, uh, uh, crazy spoilers or anything. But the fact that the main character is like you know the 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 daughter of the original killer billy mm -hmm. and yeah. the the moment where she kind of sees him and uh and he, she's having that this like conversation with his memory or his ghost or whatever because she's a little uh cuckoo as the the doctors call it and uh, when uh he's like well you know what we got to do we got to get to the bottom of this and start cutting some fucking throats. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that is what we should do in this movie. And it's kind of what happens, <laughs> which is what, what I really dug about it is that, yeah, it's got this, you know, like, is, is she actually a good character or is she a little bit of like a psychopath? And the answer is kind of both. And it anyway, so I enjoyed that. I thought all the callbacks to the like, you know, there there are some real trailer lines in it. But as far as being sort of a popcorn horror movie, I was like, oh, this is really like it's entertaining and it's smart enough. Like it's knowing about what's going on in horror right now. And I mm -hmm. feel like that's kind of what those other screen movies missed is that they were commenting you know, like there was still the meta thing happening, but it was just the meta thing about sequels or trilogies or whatever, or, you know, this, this new, uh, uh, you know, for part four, it was about sort of social media. Um, but it, other than saying this is what's happening, it didn't really have a perspective on it. I feel like it, like it didn't have, it wasn't, it wasn't passing judgment. <laughs> And I feel like in this movie, they're like, oh, the requel movie, like, even though we are that thing, we're going to tell you the cynicism behind that thing. And I and I thought all that worked. I thought it was really good. Um, I enjoyed it as well. I was very 
pleasantly surprised by it. Uh, not, I mean, the only one I outright don't like is three, but four, I have actually come up on it a little bit since I, I initially I didn't like it. And then I've watched it a couple times since then. And I'm like, oh, it's all right. It's, it has some things I do like, but I mean, I think you're right in that one is super solid. Like I, I, that is legitimately good. And then the others are just kind of, they always just felt like more of the same, but this one, I like the fact that they shook it up with the, you know, we got like a new batch of characters. You still had the older characters that were there, but, and one of them, you know, had a significant event Mm -hmm. (laughs) for risk of spoiling. I guess, I don't know. The movie's been out for like 11 months. I guess if people were going to see it, they'd see it by now. Right. And, you know, yes, the the opening of this is very reminiscent of the opening of the original. Oh, and I like what they did with that Mm -hmm. too, as far as they, you know, subverted your expectation there. Mm -hmm. And I uh, like the whole bits with Dewey and all of all that that entails. And yeah, there were things about it that I thought were, you know, pretty great. And I didn't hate any of that. Well, maybe one of the characters, I don't know, but it, for the most part, I was okay with the characters. And, and uh, I really liked the brother character, the one that um, was dating the girl <laughs> and everyone was like, you might be the killer. You might be the killer. I liked him and I was really sad about his fate just because I really liked that character. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I I thought it was great. I think it was a good move to bring in some fresh people and sort of uh, relegate the older characters to more background roles Mm -hmm. because they weren't really in it all that much. I think that was a really good move. And uh, even though, yes, you know, these characters have been around since the beginning and that is unheard of in a slasher franchise just you just you know you're gonna get maybe three movies out of them at the most right except for the more recent halloweens with jamie lee curtis but it's it just is not typically done so and i appreciate that like you know yeah i get it but at the same time sydney's always annoyed the piss out of me so i don't really i don't really care to see her um i don't know what it is it's just that she has these weird and everybody makes fun of me because I pick on her for this, but she has these weird, like she's always grabbing her neck, you know, and she's always making these faces and I'm just like, Oh my God, she makes me tired. I just don't (laughs) care for her as a character. I just don't. But anyway, I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. And so I'm anxious to see what they'll do with the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of on board. Yeah. I thought it was like, it's a good time. Uh, I, I sound like a real film critic here. It's a good time at the movies, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it was. It was like, it's smart. En- it's just smart enough for me to enjoy w- the, w- the commentary of the movie and all the horror stuff worked. And I liked all the characters. I thought uh, Jack Quaid as the, the boyfriend uh, I thought was yes. a lot of fun. And I just that like was him. Great. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Anytime he shows up, I'm, I'm like, Oh, you know, <laughs> so I really enjoyed him. Yeah, and it, like if you don't know, he's on the boys. He plays Huey on on the boys, and uh, so if if listeners are like, "Who the hell is Jack Quaid?" He's a really funny kind of quirky actor, and he's very good. And um, yeah, it's a legitimately good time, uh, which is something I never thought I would ever say again about another screen movie. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. What about you? Did you? Um, well, speaking of the boys, did you ever see Smile? I watched it last night. Oh, okay. Because A-Train is in that movie, and I was like, oh, look at him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, (laughs) can we talk about Smile real quick, since you brought it up? Uh, Yeah, Since I just saw saw it, I know I'm kind of skipping your turn here, uh, but we will. No, that's fine. I'm the one that brought it up, so um we'll we'll give you equal opportunity here yeah so this is another way that i'm gonna sound like i'm damning this movie with faint praise and that's not at all how i mean it but i think smile is one of the better 
like big budget theater horror movies I've seen in a long time. Yes. Um, I, like I, I was really into it. Sosie Bacon is so good in it. We were uh, talking on the Discord today with with some of the uh, other hosts and listeners and whatnot about how much I really liked her and that she sort of embodies that person that might be crazy, but is certainly acting crazy, but might not be crazy. You know, like Mm -hmm. she's just manic and nuts and all of that stuff. She's so good in it. (coughs) Pardon me. Yeah, I, uh, I uh, totally agree. And that's another one that when we, because I went to see that in the theater and I was like, oh, you know, look at this. Because when I first saw the trailer, the first thing that popped into my head, and and I've heard other people say it too, is um, was Truth or Dare, mm-hmm. that god awful, god awful movie, and movies like that, you know, because if you're looking at studio movies released in the theater frequently, that's the kind of bullshit you get, you know, because they're just going for and they want a wide audience, you know, and mm-hmm. that's so they play it safe and try to drag in as many people as they can. But I got to say, I was so impressed with what they did with the marketing for that film. Did you hear about that? The baseball games where they had hired actors to just sit in the stands, like behind home plate so that they'd be on camera Mm -hmm. and just smile, just sit there with a smile. Like it was so unnerving that one of the ballparks actually called security on them because they were freaking people out. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That's great. I, I I loved it. Like they poured a lot of money into the marketing for this film. And when I went to see it, I didn't really know what to expect as far as quality goes, but I was, I was very, very happy. I'm like, this movie is fun. Like, mm-hmm. it was fun. Sosie Bacon was amazing. I thought the end was just the right amount of tragic. I yeah, I just really enjoyed it. So I was very, very happy with that. Yeah, it's it's one of those movies where if you wanna if you want to dig into it, like the whole movie is about past trauma and how it affects your life and you know Mm -hmm. how you can get stuck in it and how it can be toxic and all of that so there's plenty of hey i want to write my you know junior year essay about trauma in smile um and you can get away with that like that there's enough meat on that bone to get away with it but the thing that i really enjoyed about it is that it's just legitimately creepy at times and not just the the smiling face but like there are some shots of, uh, especially when Sosie Bacon is first starting to see shit, and it's like, oh, I think somebody's back in that corner, and I can barely see them, but I'm pretty sure somebody's standing there. And that sort of like, I can't quite make it out, but it's definitely something kind of vibe that I thought w- was super creepy. Um, it's definitely got some jump scares, but it doesn't rely on jump scares. Mm-hmm. In the way that, uh, you know, some of the Conjuring movies, I, I think, are, are sort of the worst offenders of that kind of thing. Um, where it just becomes so, like, big and bombastic and the music cues are letting you know exactly how you ought to feel and that kind of thing. I And, and it's beautifully shot. There's that uh, early on in the movie, you get that overhead shot of the ambulance pulling Mm -hmm. up with the girl who eventually kind of sets off the chain of events and the camera follows her screaming at uh, like a uh, uh, overhead shot from high above. And then the camera just tilts up and then moves into Sosie Bacon's office as the phone starts ringing. And you know, like, Oh, she's getting called about that person that just came out of the ambulance. And it's just a nice little like cinematic storytelling moment where you realize like, oh, I'm in the hands of a legitimately good director. Mm-hmm. And and this is not just, you know, like it is a popcorn movie. It, it is not the um, kind of navel gazing kind of pace of a, like an A24 movie or something like that. It's a little more, you know, brisk than something like that. And it's a little more like, I don't want to say drive in cause that I feel like that kind of undersells it, but, but it's definitely a horror movie. Like it, it's out to scare you. 
and it's, yeah. so it's more of a fun house kind of movie in that way but it's it's thoughtful and it's well done and it's got great performances in it uh there's a point where a child is given a dead cat for a birthday that oh is, my god that is one of like the look on that kid's face of like the fuck is this it it's really good um yeah i love smile you know that scene where uh <laughs> the she thinks she's talking to her therapist like the therapist shows up at her house and yeah. she thinks that's who she's talking to until the phone rings and then there's that bit where she just the therapist just comes at her like she just comes running straight for her uh, i was that freaked me out i was like in a knot in my theater seat i was just like ah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really it just, good. It worked. It worked, and uh, I was yeah, I was all about it. So I enjoyed the hell out of that one, and it's, yeah. that was nice. Yeah, it, one of those things where um, I heard that it was good, and I was like, eh, I don't know this. Like you said, this looks like a real truth or dare kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then you see it, and you're like, oh no, this is way better than that bullshit. Um, in fact, in the Discord, it was Court who who mentioned like, "Oh, this that was the movie that looked like Truth or Dare," and I, you know, I had to dispel that immediately. Like, no, 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 this is a far superior film to Truth or Dare, and and well worth your time. So, um, yeah, For that sure. was one I, I meant to get to the theater. I just I was never able to kind of make the time to get there. So when I heard like on Sunday, oh, it's going to be on Paramount Plus on Tuesday, it was like great. That makes me feel so much better. I watched it last night in the dark, and it was terrific. Oh, perfect. Okay, well then, I will go with... Oh, we watched Pennywise, the story of It, uh, which is a documentary about the original It miniseries. And I don't remember where it was, if it was on Shudder. I think it was on Shudder. Mm -hmm. But that was really good. I enjoyed that quite a bit. So if you like documentaries, I recommend that. I do. Is it, did you feel like there was a lot of stuff that you did not know going into it? Or was it like, oh, I kind of knew this stuff, but it was fun to revisit? Uh, well, no, I think it was a mix. Uh, there were some stuff that I already knew, but there was a lot of stuff that I didn't realize. And because they're, they talk about the, you know, behind the scenes stuff and the making of and, and how they got to where they did and the choices that they made. So I thought, yeah, it was definitely worth your time. I think even if you are not a, a huge fan of the original one, I think you could still get uh, a lot of interesting tidbits out of it. I am one of the people that I prefer the 2017 it to the original TV version I love Tim Curry, mm -hmm. but I've just, I've never, I, even when it came out, I never found it scary. You know, we talked about it in school after we watched it, but it, I never thought it was scary, but I'm not afraid of clowns, but um, it was, so I'm not like a huge fan of it, but I was still interested in everything they had to say about it. Like I was engaged. So if you are just a mild fan, then you should get some interest out of it. If you are a big fan, then I definitely recommend you watch it. So I I'm, I think I'm in your camp. Like I like, I like especially It Chapter 1 a whole lot. I thought It Chapter 2 felt a little yeah, off Nobody somehow. can seem to do that second half. I don't know what it is, but the, something about the second half of that story, nobody can seem yeah. to nail it just right you know yeah that's what i was going to ask you about i wonder why that is i wonder what it what is so difficult i mean obviously i'll tell you what i thought the the stuff that they did at the end with pennywise in his lair was good like i don't think it had the the spider problem that the, the first one does right i, I the only thing i was kind of like eh, about the very end of it chapter two was just the fact that they insulted him to death you know <laughs> just, and i get right. it you know but i just it just didn't seem all that exciting i guess but there was so much other stuff about that like i love bill Hader. that moment when he gets caught in the deadlights and he just 
freezes and his arms swing. That's creepy as hell to me. I yeah. I love that. So there was just overall, I I prefer both of those, but I would say definitely, at least in my opinion, chapter two is weaker than chapter one. But overall, I was pretty happy with what they did with it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I I'm I am curious about like what I'll I'll tell you. That I I think you're right. I think all that stuff worked in it. Chapter two. I think it was when they're kind of running around the house as adults, where I was like, ah, this feels a little like we're spinning our wheels a little bit and it, it's a little silly and I don't feel like anything in it. Chapter one is just outright silly. Maybe it's that maybe it's when you see children in those situations, it is genuinely effective. But when you see adults battling the same kind of creature, maybe it just doesn't seem as scary. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I thought, I mean, cause I was, I thought the casting was good as mm -hmm. far as the adult actors went. And I think they made some really good choices there. So that wasn't a problem. They're all good actors. So that's not a problem. Uh, hey, yeah. I don't know. And there were things about it that I did really like, you know, I liked the very beginning of it when they're at the carnival. And I thought that was just horrifying um, with the, with the couple mm -hmm. and when you see uh, what happens to the one guy with Pennywise, it broke my heart. Like it legitimately broke my heart. Like it, I, I loved that. And then it just, I don't know. It seemed kind of clunky in places with the, them all having to get their little, their, their totems and their individual stories. It kind of seemed to drag it out a little bit. I think maybe that was part of it. Like it just seemed to slow everything down. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think you're wrong about any of that. I need to go back and rewatch it, and I really it, should too. You know, because I only watched it the the one time, and and like it chapter one, I remember seeing that and going back to see it again in a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I one I've great. seen probably four times, and I think I've only seen chapter two once. So I guess I should no, I've seen it twice, but I should go back and watch it again because it's been a while. Yeah, I feel yeah, I feel like I need to give it another day in court. And even if I don't like it, at least I'll be able to speak a little more eloquently about why I don't like it, you know? Yeah. Um all right, yeah. All right. Uh hit me with another one since I did the the one two of scream and smile in my uh trip through oh. the, the letter S. Okay, well, let's we can go back a little bit in time because I recently rewatched Race with the Devil. Did you ever see that with um, Peter Fonda and Loretta Swit? And I forget who the other guy is. You know, but the two couples they're in an RV, and the the husbands accidentally witness a satanic ritual in the woods, and. Uh, then they, the Satanists see them. And so then they go on the chase and the whole movie is pretty much them being, um, it's from 1975. And so the whole movie is them in their RV being, uh, it's not like one big long chase scene, mm -hmm. but they're going from place to place and they're getting harassed and they're getting, and these people are trying to kill them because of what they saw. And I just think it's a really fun movie. I I enjoy that movie so much. I, of course, it's mid seventies. You got me right there. I mean, you know me. I'm a sucker for seventies movies, so I'm automatically going to have a good time. But but I, Peter Fonda. I mean, I love Peter Fonda, <laughs> and he's really good. So I thought he was really good in this. It just um, it's just one of those fun occulty 70s movies and I, I don't think you can go wrong with that and so if anybody out there has not seen it i do recommend it and i think you can get it like on tubi or something it's pretty easy to find if you don't have it but uh yeah it's fun i love seeing satanists try to chase people down now there are some good uh some really good explosions and action scenes because you've got like these, and it takes place in Texas. So you've got these like Texas Satanists <laughs> chasing, 
chasing them down in pickup trucks and stuff. And they're trying to shoot out the RV to, to get them off their tail. And then at one point, this, uh, one car goes off a bridge. And so you get a nice bit there. There's some really decent explosions. It's just, it's, it's fun. I love movies where uh, people see things they shouldn't see and then, you know, got to try to get away from it. And especially if there are Satanists involved and it's in the seventies, I, you know, it's a win-win. Yeah. It, this is a movie I've heard about all my life and I've, I've just never seen it. Which is, well, I mean, nuts. I'd say if you got some time on your hands, which I know that you don't, <laughs> but uh-huh. if you ever get some time on your hands and you want to fill in a hole, fill in that one. It's pretty fun. I, you know, I, uh, yeah. I, in war notes, is that who's in it? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Warren Oates. And the only one I didn't know was the uh, one of the wives. So it's like Warren Oates and Peter Fonda and Loretta Swit and then some other lady. <laughs> I didn't know who she was. But yeah, I mean, so it's a solid cast. And for them to be doing something, you know, that's, you know, about being... Cha- oh, and what's that guy's name? Um, he's always... Oh, he's always, he played in the car. He played the drunk uh, wife beater guy who actually saves the day at the end with his explosions. But I cannot remember his name, but he was really good in it. We lost easily half the audience with Loretta Swit. And that is is the point. (laughs) That's the point where people are like, who? Uh, Are you talking about, all right, R.G. Armstrong? Who played the sheriff in Race with the yes. Devil? Okay. Yes. Yeah, that guy, he is a character actor, but he always plays a dick. <laughs> like he's really good at playing a dick, and he shows up in a lot of different things. So I thought he was good in this. Yeah, you know, what's funny is I make references all the time, mm-hmm. and Brian's like, nobody's going to get that. Nobody's going <laughs> to get that. <laughs> it's, nobody's I, gonna get that and i'm like well I'm fucking old leave me alone yeah i mean obviously i enjoy it <laughs> but i also enjoy it when people talk about larry storch you know like that <laughs> that makes me happy and at this point like nobody knows who larry storch is um or uh or just somebody like mickey dolan's like that is a thing that is is slowly slipping away to the the sands of time um but yeah i always loved him yeah i was watching uh the halloween remake and i had forgotten that he had a cameo in that oh i forgot that too yeah he's he's the the guy selling malcolm mcdowell a gun oh wow yeah and it's right it's not a very good scene (laughs) That's... no but i don't even think i recognized him until you just said that and i pictured him in my head holy uh, shit yeah yeah uh so sure enough well it's uh we just talked about um brian and i just talked about the twilight zone movie and because mm-hmm. we watched that for halloween as one of our halloween watches because of the twenty thousand feet you know segment. Yeah. oh yeah sure so we um we're talking about that and we were talking about the the joe dante segment with the like live action cartoon you mm-hmm. know with the the kid and i said that i personally prefer the original twilight zone episode with um it's a with, billy uh, movie. Will, will robinson yeah yeah <laughs> um wishing people into the cornfield and then after i said it i was like nobody's gonna know who the fuck that is right like, <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah <laughs> Uh, but oh well yeah here's some <laughs> fun trivia do you, uh you probably know this but do you know who directed the movie segment the uh terror twenty thousand feet i do yes it was george can't remember his name miller but uh, miller thank you yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. um we actually talked about that because it seems like he just feels like an outlier to me in that group. Like John Landis, Steven Spielberg, and Joe Dante all fit together for me. Like that makes sense. But George Miller just seems odd. 
but I think he did the best segment. I honestly think yeah. his is the best one. So I totally agree. And and that I I agree with both of those points that he doesn't seem like he's in the mix there, but also he's the best of the bunch. You know? Yeah. Um although I'm curious to see this new Spielberg movie about the you know, the kind of autobiographical fictionalized autobiographical film the fablemans that he's doing that could be interesting yes yeah i i look i'm always willing to watch a spielberg anything except for war horse and that's only because i knew it would make me cry mm -hmm. and i wasn't in the mood to cry <laughs> but it, over animals but um spielberg i mean we just watched duel again oh sure <sighs> God damn, that movie is masterful. Yeah. I mean, just really just incredible, especially for somebody right out of the gate. The guy is fucking talented. Although it's funny, you'd probably get a kick out of it. When we were talking about Twilight Zone, Brian went on this nut about Landis because he is angry. He's still angry about Vic Morrow and the two little kids. Mm -hmm. And every time we talk, he's just like, fuck that guy. I hope he burns in hell. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, and he seems is, like kind of a dick on top. Which is, it's tough to take because I love his films. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I mean, I'm a big Landis movie fan. And it really hurts my feelings that that all of that went down. And that it went down the way it did. And it's just his hubris that mm -hmm. caused everything. And it just, that hurts my soul because uh, like Kentucky Fried Movie, one of my favorite movies, that's one of Brian's favorite movies. Um, of course, uh, American Werewolf in London. We just rewatched just for fun, the thriller video this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God damn, like he's so good. And just having that dark cloud hang over everything is so depressing. But I don't get angry about it. Brian does, though. He gets mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I get that. It, it's a real bummer that, you know, somebody that's so talented, that has made such great movies, and it turns out that, you know, a little bit of an asshole. It's not, that's not great. You know, no. that's, that's real unfortunate. Um, uh, all right, here, here's one that I just want to see if you've watched, and if not, uh, I'm going to recommend it to you. But I watched uh, Weird, the Weird Al. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, I loved it so I, much. Okay, I'm so glad you've seen this, because there are only a handful of people that I've talked to who have actually seen this movie. It is so goddamn funny. It oh is my god, I was dying. And I gotta tell you, I wasn't expecting any of that. I just going in because i knew about it i would actually seen interviews about it you know and so i was expecting a more straightforward biopic i was not expecting that and i was just howling through the whole thing it was so funny and i thought the performances were so good it just i had a blast you know so what i thought what was so good about it. I mean, I, I think the movie is terrific. But it's the slow build. Like, there are some funny jokes in the in the early goings about, you know, his, his father being against accordion salesman. And <laughs> yeah. I love the police showing up at the polka party and rousting it and all that stuff. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Or when he walks in, he's like, oh, a polka party? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we found your son at a party. A polka party. Yeah. Um <laughs> So all that stuff was like, okay, this is funny. And then when it gets to the poolside, another one rides the bus bit. Oh my God. And it was like, okay, this is like, they're kicking it up a notch. But as soon as the drinking started, when it became like, oh, he's just like, we're doing that part of the biopic where he gets into drugs and alcohol and goes off the rails and you have Madonna egging it on just so he'll do that parody of her of one of her he songs. become a, a south american drug lord <laughs> yeah yeah it's holy shit it, that, like that moment when he he's drunk yelling at his band and having 
like as someone who has seen Weird Al Yankovic live five, six times probably at this point, and just been a, yeah, just been a fan for years. You know, like I, I think it's one of the few times you can go to a show and it's really funny and it's really entertaining and everybody in the crowd is there to have a good time and the ages are from you know like nine to ninety. It, 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 you know, he is the male Dolly Parton. He is just beloved by all. And <laughs> which, by the way, was a comparison really? I thought of recently. And I, I'm like, I think that's true. There are very few people that are just like, I hate Weird Al Yankovic. You know, like, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. Right. I really it's think, like, you can't. How can you hate him? Right, right. And, and seeing him in interviews and that kind of thing. And he, he seems like such a genuinely nice, silly kind of guy. And so my impression of him and then suddenly seeing this turn in the movie where he becomes this drunken asshole just killed me. And without spoiling it, but you'll know what I'm talking about. The very end of the movie being a thing that is entirely impossible but it is maybe my favorite thing in the whole film is like that, that kind of, you know, the scroll at the end of like, here's what happened after the events of the movie and you know, what everyone is up to now. And I just, <laughs> I just thought it was a, a, just a goddamn delight. Oh, that is the perfect word for it. It was, Oh my God. I just, I can't believe how much I loved it. I, I want to see it again. I can't wait to see it again. I just think it was, phenomenal i love the whole oh my god and it's just like it's one of those movies where you can talk about every scene mm -hmm. like you were mentioning the poolside scene did you have as much fun as i did picking out all the people that they were supposed to be you oh. know like just the elvira was there and andy warhol was there and um uh, frank zappa was there and it just and i was like oh that's so and so uh -huh. oh that's so and so oh, yeah uh, that was so much fun and then, um, shit, had another, had another bit that had me cracking up, but, ah, uh, well, seeing like Conan O'Brien so as Andy Warhol show up and like, I know this was, a, he was on set for 20 minutes or whatever, but, uh, and, oh, and Jack Black as Wolfman Jack. Yes. It was yes. terrific. Like it, and that's another reason that I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. As I was thinking about the cameos, the Patton Oswalt cameo as being like the the guy yelling at the stage in the crowd, and that after I Love Rocky Road is over, he's crying. He's so moved by the performance, like all that stuff. Like you saw so many like big names turn out for this movie that I know was made on the cheap, but it's just chock full of people that are comic legends in their own right and it's just because everybody loves weird al that they're like hey do you want to be in this weird al movie that is very brilliantly a parody of biopics and it's like why would you not want to do that why would you not want to stand around the pool with a bunch of other funny people and yeah. you know celebrate this guy and daniel radcliffe much like uh leslie nielsen in the naked gun movies just plays it straight and that's exactly what it needs it like he is playing it as if he's trying to get an oscar for this biopic and oh it's so good god damn that movie is so good um <laughs> i i i love it i'm uh, sorry i could go. I know what i was gonna say the uh -huh. fact that he uh that whole bit about how eat it was completely original and oh, he, he wasn't copying anybody i can't wear that jacket anymore everybody's gonna think it's a michael jackson jacket <laughs> oh and th the throwaway joke at the end where he he's doing amish paradise and you see coolio in the audience and <laughs> yes and it's like oh this is going to happen again oh it's so good and and just the running gag of you know dad you, i know you work in the factory i just don't even know what you make there yeah, the well, factory. When, right. When, well, when you're when you get a job down there, you'll know these things. What do what do we make here? Oh, <laughs> just all of the that running gag is really funny. It's it was just so great. I mean, it was one of those things. And and um, my girlfriend, God bless her, she went to a Weird Al show with me not long ago, and 
watch the movie with me um and you know like at, at first she was a little skeptical i think but by the time the another one rides the bus scene happened she was like this is actually really funny and i was like i know i know it's so good anyway yeah terrific anyway yeah you, you go again or i am going to do nothing but just you know talk about other things from the movie weird that made me laugh <laughs> Well, I just I will end that bit by saying uh, it was not at all what I expected, but it was everything that I wanted. I didn't even know it, but it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And anybody who is a Weird Al fan, you have to see it. Yeah, I would oh. even go so far as to say you may not that may not be necessary. I think the movie kind of stands on its own legs. I'll go along with that. You know, that, I, I mean, it certainly helps. Like, if you're a Weird Al fan, then you're going to get a lot more out of it. Because there's some shit in the movie that's actually true. And you'll be able to... that That's kind of the genius of it is, like, it's true enough, but it's also outrageously wrong. And... But but I think even if you don't care about Weird Al that much, as long as, long as you think the, the song Eat It is kind of funny, <laughs> then the the whole movie, I think, will work for you. Awesome. Did you ever end up watching Speak No Evil? Oh, man. Which one was that? That's the one where the couple meets another couple abroad and then they end up going to visit them and they're at their home in the Netherlands, I think. No, I did not see that. And uh, okay, that's on Shudder. I won't spoil it then, but I do recommend it. I thought it was really good. Okay. Um, it's, yeah. Two couples are, they're vacationing separately in Italy and they don't know each other. But one of them is from, I want to say it's the Netherlands and then the other couple is from Finland or something. They're all right around there together. And uh, so uh, afterward, after they all get home. <laughs> there uh, are pickled a, fish involved is what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> yes. Are you herring me? That's what I'm saying. Uh. Get, I, that was great, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> that was rough. So the, <laughs> well, what do you want? I'm, I'm rusty. It's been a month. <laughs> uh, um, I feel like you cod do better. <laughs> you know, if Weird Al made a fish song, it could be like a sturgeon. <laughs> yeah, Just like yeah. You. Too bad he did like a sturgeon instead. You know what's funny is because in the movie he's like nothing rhymes with virgin and I was like sturgeon yeah surgeon virgin although I don't know you can make a movie out of that but I mean a song but anyway these two couples are there they meet each other and then after they all get home the one couple gets a postcard from the other couple and they're like hey come visit us we live out in the country you know come take some you know come spend the weekend with us because they're you know not that far away from each other so they drive their family out. And all I'll say is that things don't go as they plan. Mm -hmm. And they this other family is not exactly what they expected them to be. But I thought it was really, really good. And I'm actually, I've been anxious. I asked, Duncan was supposed to watch it, and I haven't talked to him since, but it was one of his Halloween watches. And so I was like, well, I want to talk to you after you watch it to see what you thought. And I haven't talked to him. So... I do uh, I do recommend it. It's on Shutter and I thought it was very very good. All right. Uh yeah, I'll check it out. I've uh I've been trying to catch up on the the Shutter rewatches and in fact, um this might end us probably will. Um but I will give you a movie what uh, I watched on on Shutter recently and that is the movie Sissy. I keep hearing people talk about it, but I haven't watched it. Oh, it's so good. Um, okay. So the, uh, it, here's the premise of the movie. And when I tell you the premise of the movie, it, it's going to sound like something you've seen a million times before, or at least something that you might not be interested in, but, but bear with me. So the premise of the movie is that you have, um, a girl named, is it, oh, what, it, what is her, is it Alicia? Cecilia, sorry. 
uh, played by Aisha D, who is terrific in the movie. Anyway, so Cecilia, uh, known as Sissy when she was a kid, um, has uh, I, I, she's like a social media influencer. Like she has a like two hundred thousand followers, and basically it's her sitting cross legged in front of her phone, spewing a bunch of like new age uh, like philosophy bullshit. And, you know, all about like, hey, here's this rope that, you know, you can build a circle around yourself and this is where you don't let anyone hurt you and this is your space and that kind of stuff. So she ends up running into um, an old friend of hers and like from elementary school and this old friend of hers, like they were best friends and like you know, buried, uh, 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 what do you call them things that you bury in the ground and dig up way later? A time capsule? Uh, time capsules. Okay. Yeah. Did some of that stuff. Okay. And yeah, sorry. I'm <laughs> getting old. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you, what do you, what do you call that stuff that, uh, it's, it's liquid and you need it to, to survive and you drink it. Rum? Um, Water. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, that too. <laughs> well, um, what do you call that thing? It's a capsule, and like you bury it, and then you dig it up after a certain amount of time. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I knew, but I, in fairness, I knew as soon as I started describing it, I was like, "All right, the word will come to me as I, you know, try to rebuild those neural pathways." Um, to to, to the word time capsule, a thing I haven't thought about since the movie Knowing, probably. Uh, but at any rate, so, the, you know, that kind of thing, they were super best friends. And then when, uh, they were in like late elementary, early middle school, um, the two girls end up losing their friendship because there's a girl named Alex that kind of comes into the picture and Alex and Emma, who is the the friend, you know, that they end up spending more time together and Sissy is kind of on the outs and, so all of this takes place like well after that when they're all adults, but Sissy runs into her old friend Emma in the supermarket and her friend is like, holy shit, I was just thinking about you and I'm about to get married. Will you come to this wedding party? Um, and I know we haven't seen each other in a long time, but it would mean the world to me because, you know, like I said, you were just on my mind and I you know, miss you so much. And so she does. And they have a good time. And then that leads to um, Sissy or Cecilia going with Emma and um, the rest of her friends uh, on what's called a hen's weekend. It's sort of, this is all an Australian movie, but it's basically like a bachelorette weekend where they, I know what they've rented is. a house I out. I talked to Kate. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So they're having, they're having a hen's weekend. And then <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to think how much of this I want to get into. So one thing leads to another and bodies start piling up and it is surprisingly graphic in its depiction of violence. But the thing, that, and, and that's, there's enough like kind of shocking body trauma that I would almost say it's worth watching Sissy just for that. But the thing that I really liked about it is that the movie is so much about the, this sort of modern idea um, that nothing is really ever your fault. And that this is like the world is just a thing that happens to you and that you have to deal with it, that you don't really have any agency in it. You're just trying to get by. And sort of deflating that idea and saying like, no, 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 actually the world is in many ways what you make it. And also a little bit of like, well, and you know, maybe some people are just crazy from jump. Um, <laughs> so there's a little bit of all of that, but it's, like I said, it's shockingly violent at times. Um, and, and very funny at times. And the performance, especially from Aisha D is so good. Um, and it, it, it's another one of those movies that's on shutter right now. And if you have not seen sissy, um, I really, really recommend it. Like, as I said, I've been kind of watching movies to, uh, to kind of fill out the, 
end of year like best of yeah. list and sissy might end up being on my tip. oh wow okay um yeah it's it's very good <clears throat> pardon me again um yeah i i really recommend it and i like i will watch speak no evil you watch sissy and then we'll compare notes because you you really yay i think you would really enjoy it like by the time that movie ends it is like uh there is as much blood on the floor as in the movie revenge oh wow all right I'm down. right it's that kind of bloody so uh which again was pretty shocking because it's not the movie I expected it to be, even from the first like twenty thirty minutes of it. I was like, okay, I think I kind of see where this movie's headed, and then I was totally wrong. It just it it goes in places, which which is great. Uh, I really like the fact that I I couldn't really anticipate it, and then by the time the movie wraps up, I was like, oh, this was sort of the perfect ending for this movie, and uh, I really adored it. So it, it, um, one of those rare movies that gets better, the, the more it goes, you know, like it, it, it sticks the landing something fierce. Well, I'm super excited. Yeah. Yeah. You should, you should watch that one. Um, I'll tell you what, we're, we're kind of at our time. Um, but, uh, being, being that we were off for a month, uh, and also just because this is the time of year where we watch kind of the stuff that you know dreams are made could, of. could be on an interview yeah <laughs> uh is there anything in particular you're looking forward to to seeing Ooh, looking forward to uh, i feel like there was something and now i can't remember what it was um <laughs> i well a lot of the stuff i was looking forward to has already happened you know like a barbarian mm -hmm. Halloween ends. Yeah, that's good. Um, and there's something though. Oh, I was I was looking forward to. Oh, what's the name of it? It just came out. Oh shit. Um, just came out last weekend, and I was like, okay, well that looks interesting, but then I heard it was bad, and I don't remember what. It was. Oh, I know, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Pray for yes. the devil, yeah, something like so that. So when I saw the trailer for that, I was like, okay, it looks like it's gonna be one of those, ugh, you know, like this the the usual that we get with all the jump scares and the like. It just, it looked mm -hmm. bad, but at the same time, I was like, I, I, how can I not watch a devil movie? Like so, and I was interested. But then when it came out, then I heard nothing good. And I'm like, well, fuck. Um, Megan, that's one that I'm looking forward to. I think, oh, I think yeah, that yeah. And it does kind of remind me of the Child's Play remake and that, you know, it was AI um, who's this AI doll who is like hell bent on protecting her f person. So it's very, I think it might be end up kind of similar to that. But I just... I, what is intriguing to me about that film is that this AI doll is played by an actual kid and she looks like she's doing a really, like she looks like she's going to be able to capture like the darkness that's necessary. I'm kind of interested because I love it. I love to see child actors push their limits. And I think that, I think that looks like it could be fun. Like there's one bit in the trailer that I just love where she's uh this little boy is like picking on, her person and she's like i think you should run <laughs> and she just starts yeah. coming after him and i'm like okay i want to see this because one i love evil kid movies and even though uh -huh. she's not a real kid it it counts and uh two it just looks like it could be interesting i feel like this little i feel like this little girl is pouring her everything into this role so i, I want to check it out yeah, the uh, the girl child saw the trailer for this movie and is quite excited. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She pretty pretty quick. She was like, "I want to go see that," and I was like, "All right, well, let me you know do some research and make sure that it's not too much, you know, too traumatizing, yeah. right?" Uh, but you know, we'll we'll see. I'm look. I'm all for her wanting to watch horror movies. Don't get me wrong, but. 
um i I've, i told this story to duncan recently but over halloween um they the kids were like hey let's watch a, a scary movie but not something silly like something really scary and so i threw on uh annabelle creation okay and yeah right like no this is legitimately scary and the girl didn't make it half an hour really that surprises yeah, she was me. like i she yeah it, it really screwed with her and in fact um she she only made it half an hour before she was like i'm gonna go upstairs and play roblox this is this is screwing with me and the the boy made it all the way through but he sat right beside me the entire time because it was scaring him Aww. my girlfriend who was teasing him like i don't know what you're so scared about this movie is not that scary um we go to bed and she's like i didn't want to say this in front of the kids but that movie freaked me out <laughs> and it's like no oh, you filthy liar <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah. but i was but i got i got the bathroom because it was dark because no no <laughs> nothing like that but i got you know uh uh I, I i i was a triple threat i got all three of them I got the hat. Ooh, good on you, man. And the and the little the the girl child tapped out. That uh that's I totally picture that going the other way. It it happened around the time that um you saw the doll under the stairs mm-hmm. and and then you realize like, oh, there's something with its eyes open standing high above the doll. And she was like, I don't like this. And so, yeah, she, she did. She tapped out, which, which made me very happy. It was like, oh, you couldn't even make it. That's awesome. Um, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. So you, yeah, you want to, yeah, felt pretty good about you it. You want to hear a funny story that will allow you to make fun of me real quick? Oh, <laughs> always. <All right>. Well, <laughs> like, you don't have to ask that. You just do that. <laughs> so uh, the other day, I, uh, <laughs> this is so embarrassing, but the other day I went into the library and I, we don't allow the cats in the library just because there's a lot of expensive books in there and we don't want them clawing at anything or doing anything they shouldn't be doing. So they're not allowed in there. So when you go in there though, there's Ophelia, she is hot on your tail. Like she wants to get in there just because she's not supposed to be in there. So I had to go in the library the other day and I felt her coming up behind me in the hall. So instead of turning on the light, I just rushed in there and then closed the door behind me. And then I turned around and the the shadows immediately started fucking with me. And I was like, what am I going to (laughs) do? And I, I had the, and at that point I turned on the light, but here's the thing. I started thinking about exorcist three and then I was afraid to leave the room because if I leave the room and I close the door behind me, then that's when, you know, that's when the exorcist three happens and they come and they get me when mm-hmm. I close the door. <laughs> so I'm, uh-huh. I'm in the library. I'm like, how am I going to get out of here? I can't. <laughs> I'm afraid to leave. And I'm like, Oh, I know. I'll call Brian and tell him to come get me out. <laughs> but I didn't have my phone. And I'm like, fuck, I'm trapped. <laughs> so, I was standing in there. So, uh, <laughs> all right. And so, uh, just so I make sure I understand this, you are in your own yes. home. In in the library of your yes. own home. Which, good on you for having Yay. that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is at home? Yeah, he's in the living room. He's probably 50 feet away if I turn the... Co- we have to go down the hall and turn the corner, but he's, you know, down. he's in the other end of the house. Within... He's within earshot. So... So is that how it resolved itself? Did you actually no. call it? <laughs> no. So what happened was I was standing in there trying to figure out how the hell I was going to get out of this room. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> And he go and he started to notice that I had been gone for a long time. So I just uh-huh. hear him from the living room. He goes, "Baby, <laughs> like, where are you?" And when he's when I heard his voice, then I was able to get the courage to leave the room because I'm like, "Okay, he's right there. I can hear his voice." So I just opened the door, 
turned off the light and closed the door and ran down the hall. And <laughs> and I came running into the living room. I was like full speed. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I was trapped in the library. And he's like, why were you trapped? And I'm like, Exorcist 3. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, <laughs> because he knows it, it'll be Okay, I don't know what it is. It's that movie. It's that one single movie, that one scene from that movie will paralyze me. And we have a long hallway that's nothing but doors, you know, and to go to the bathroom, the bathroom is at the very end of the hall. So you have to pass by all these doors to get to the bathroom. And if I start thinking about that movie, I won't make it. Like I have to get my phone I don't want to turn on the hall light if he's sleeping so I'll have to get my phone and use it as a flashlight to go down the hall a few weeks ago and this is because we had just watched the thing on Shudder the um, mm -hmm. scariest movie moments or whatever and, and that was one of them so that's why it was fresh in my brain so uh -huh. I was up late one night he was in bed and it was probably about 4 o'clock in the morning I, no it was 3 it was 3 o'clock I started to get up to go to bed I started thinking about that movie. I couldn't go down the hall. So I went back to the living room and I ended up watching The Godfather. The whole, <laughs> the whole fucking Godfather. I watched the whole thing <laughs> because I was too scared to walk down the hall. Like as a palate cleanser? Yes. Like I need to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very it's, funny. It is. I, I fully support all of this. It is ridiculous. But that is, but that is, uh, that's that's my life and it, that's if anybody doesn't think i legitimately like if i when i talk about getting scared by things if people think i'm i'm faking it i am absolutely not like stuff like that will get that one little scene will keep me from going to pee like <laughs> like i've had to have him walk me to the bathroom after we've watched the movie <laughs> you got to walk me to the bathroom now i can't go by myself <laughs> Well, all right. So <laughs> I, I'm not that bad. The, the I will say though. I don't think a two year old is that, that bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I look. I really appreciate this. I really like that that happened. Um, but also, I think for me, the thing that gets me is when uh, here's my little peccadillo is that I like to um, get in my car before I open the garage door. Mm -hmm. And likewise, I like to make sure that the garage door is closed before I get out of my car. Okay. And I get it. the reason is, is because I have this weird paranoia of looking out the garage door and seeing someone like running at me, like get out style Ooh, yeah. of just hauling ass straight at me. And there would be no time for the door to close before they reach me. And it's it's not like it's a thing that's ever happened to me. You know, <laughs> like it's just one of those things that is this irrational fear that I have. And to this day, to this very day, I still do that. Like when I get in the, in the uh, garage, I make sure that I, you know, I open or close the garage door when I'm in the safe confines of the car. You know what? I love that. And I love hearing that from you because to be perfectly honest, you've always struck me as the kind of guy who just nothing phases. Um, like just like, uh, you know, the stuff like that just doesn't enter your mind. You know, I mean, I have all kinds of stuff like that. I'm constantly terrified of something, <laughs> but uh, so, sure. and it's irrational things, you know, real life things don't scare me at all, but like, it's the stupid irrational things that will freak me out. And uh, I love hearing that other people have those even, you know, I mean, good, good. I feel it doesn't make me yeah. feel any better about being trapped in my own library, but it does. <laughs> well, I, you know, I just, I think we all have that thing, you know, and it doesn't matter what it is, but everybody's got those like handful of, situations or places or whatever it happens to be that you're just like, Oh, that for whatever reason, this gets into my, you know, like the, the reptile brain mm -hmm. and scares me for no good yeah. reason. So, 
Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad that I'm, I'm glad that I, you told me the, the library story. That's the best. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, very I'm really pleased. bad about that. Like staying up late at night, I'll watch, uh, go down a rabbit hole where one time I was on this YouTube rabbit hole where I was watching a video about demons photo bombing people. Like, you know, they would take a family photo and then when they developed it, there would be like a demon face in it, you know? So I was watching this video. I got up to go to bed turned off the TV, got up, and then I heard something in the attic. And I was like, it's the fucking devil. The devil's in the attic. So I sat my ass back down, and I watched more TV. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> but again, an exorcist tie-in, because that's exactly what made, because, you know, she's hearing the scratching noises in the attic in the beginning. And so when I heard the noises in the attic, I'm like, it's the devil. It's the devil is coming to get me. I'm sitting my ass back down. <laughs> it's so He'll come the devil. It's so sad. It's so sad. But at the same time, I really wouldn't have it any other way. That's why I love horror as much as I do, because it does affect me. And mm -hmm. I not every movie, you know, it it has to be a good movie, but <laughs> you know, and, and it has to work. But I I love that about it. You know, mm -hmm. so. uh, yeah, absolutely. There's, there is nothing better than being scared. And sometimes you're the only person that can scare you. Oh, that is the truth. Except so, for when you're in it, you know. when you're the moments when you're in it, it's terrifying and you want it to stop and your heart is pounding and you can't hardly breathe and you want it to be over. But then after it's over, there's like a little adrenaline rush. And I'm like, Oh, that was great. I was, I was uh -huh. terrified. <laughs> so Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that is a perfect place to end this episode. Sounds good to me. I just hope uh, I can now get so, out of my bedroom. Yeah. Well, you know, keep me posted. <laughs> uh, I'll call Brian and walk so, me back to the living room. <laughs> yeah. You might let him know, just like shoot him a text. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm about to wrap up. So be ready to come. <laughs> uh, but uh anyway but that what a what a perfect like you know uh at, at the uh end of halloween we're still getting scared so that's that's perfect so at any rate um thanks everybody for listening we'll be back in a month to talk about more movies and being too scared to leave your garage and or library <laughs> next time bye